Internal Revenue Service RRS Tax News. Dirty Dozen. Taking tax advice on social media can be bad news for taxpayers. Schemes circulating involving tax forms. Taking advice from social media, bad idea for taxpayers. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think that advice actually extends far beyond just taxes, you know? I mean, honestly, like too much TikTok talk and tax scamming will be the least of your problems. However, some say if you do a lot of social media, you'll be happy as a clam that's been hoisted into the air, gripped by the sharp talons of a bird of prey. And then after being pried open and having half your entrails pecked out, dropped onto the sharp rocks of the jetty below, so as to expose your soft, squishy, clammy bowels to the elements and the crabs. But hold on, that, that doesn't sound like a happy clam. No, no, they say, it's totally happy. The clam is totally happy. And social media will make you happy as a clam too. It'll make you happy as a clam. That's currently, that's currently in the clutches of a muscular starfish attempting to break your clammy back. Like some kind of WWF wrestler. Except for the clam, it's totally for realsies. The back breaking thing for the clam is totally like real. And it's like, wait a second. Is, is that clam that's getting its back broken really happy? Yes, yes, they say that the clam likes it. The clam likes it. Look at it. Look at the way the shell is shaped on the clam. It, it's smiling as its back is broken. And social media can make you happy as a clam too. A clam currently watching his fellow clam mates be devoured raw, three at a time, by an old, out of shape man cursing each shellfish before inhaling it for not stimulating his nether regions like Viagra. Okay, now, th this is getting ridiculous. There, there is no way that that clam could possibly like that kind of treatment. I mean, I think, I think you're abusing the clams. You know, happy as a clam seems like a, seems like a propagandic term supporting like self-destructiveness or something. Honestly, was this, was this term happy as a clam? created by the Biden administration as if like as if like prying prying a clam out of its shell like pouring salt on it and devouring it is some is somehow some kind of clam affirming care or something like that is that is that how this is working you see th this is what i mean by euphemistic euphemistic language it's causing whatever on onto the news IR 2023-61, March 28, 2023, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today continued the Dirty Dozen. There's a link to that series with a warning on day seven about trusting tax advice on social media that can lure otherwise honest taxpayers and tax professionals into compromising tax situations. Social media can circulate inaccurate or misleading tax information. They've probably been looking at the mainstream media posts on social media or something right there. With it. any case, they can have misleading information. And the IRS has recently seen several examples. So these can involve common tax documents like Form W-2 or more abusive ones like Form 8944 that aimed at a very limited specialized group. So when they're shooting this stuff out basically on social media, they can shoot a more targeted type of uh, approach out and still possibly have impact a lot of people depending on how they distribute you know the scam remember how the tax system is working we have an income tax type of system there therefore income is in essence bad for taxes because that will possibly increase the taxes the irs tries to kind of see the income and verify the income of our self-reporting type of system they have leverage on the payer of a transaction that, for example, is most common in an employer-employee situation where the employer wants the deduction from paying the employee. The employee wants the income, but it's actually bad for taxes because when they report it for taxes, they have to pay, they have to pay taxes on it. The IRS wants to verify the employee's income with the use of the W-2 form as well as uh, actually get withholdings in that kind of situation. So, like, if you report something on a W-2 that's actually different than what the employer gave to the, to the IRS, 
that will clearly be something that you might not even get a refund from. They'll fix it pretty much automatically or you'll get a notice about it because it usually shouldn't take even a, a manual person to figure that out. It doesn't line up to what they have on their side for the W-2. So that kind of that kind of scheme uh, likely isn't the isn't the most effective for the scammer. The scammer might try to have people uh, basically submit a false W-2 form claiming false income, which would be a little bit more sophisticated possibly. But that but even that is not going to basically work in the long run. You would think because it wouldn't tie out to to the uh, business side of things, but. The general concept you would think is if someone's trying to give tax advice and get paid on the tax advice, they would be trying to do something that the IRS might not catch right away. It wouldn't be caught by just the machine catching it, uh, but rather they would get a refund. But once you get a refund, that's not the end of the story because the IRS can still come back at you at least three years into the future and possibly beyond that if there was fraud or uh, neglect or something like that. And by the time the IRS comes back, then whoever gave the advice has been paid and is gone and whoever's the taxpayer is on the hook not only for the taxes but for the added penalties and interest so those are the kind of scams that you would expect to possibly be happening something in that the machine won't catch on the irs side of things they'll send the refund out and then the taxpayer thinks that's the end of the story i got a refund it's all over i can sleep easy well you can't sleep easy because <laughs> there's three years that they could come back at least uh, and question the position that was taken and the other guy that took that helped you is gone and the taxpayers on the hook for taking those positions in the in because it's a self-reporting tax system okay so both schemes encourage people to submit false inaccurate information in hopes of getting a refund quote there are many ways to get good tax information including from a trusted tax professional tax software or irs.gov but people should be incredibly wary about fo uh, following advice uh, being shared on social media, in quotes, said IRS Commissioner Danny Warfell. Quote, the IRS continues to see a lot of inaccurate information that could get well-meaning taxpayers in trouble. People should remember that there's no secret way to fill out a form and simply get a larger refund that they aren't entitled to. Remember, if it, it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, in quote. Fraudulent form filing and bad advice on social media are part of the 2023 IRS annual Dirty Dozen campaign. I, I'm, I'm kind of suspicious on these. I know there's a lot of stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of misinformation on the, on the social medias and whatnot. But it kind of sounds like when they crack down on it so much that they're trying to regulate everything on social media, which is a little scary as well because some of this misinformation comes from the government sometimes you know from time to time but not in any case a list of 12 scams and schemes that put taxpayers and the tax professional community at risk is losing money personal information and data and more working together as the security summit the irs state tax agencies and the nation's industry have taken numerous steps since 2015 to warn people about common scams and schemes during tax season and beyond they're just like the justice league where like Superman and like Batman went out and warned people that bad people are out, the Joker's out there. So don't be be wary if they mess if the Joker messages you. If they Batman told people that so they can be cautious. So it includes the it including the the identity theft scheme. So the Security Summit Initiative, there's a link to that here, is committed to protecting taxpayers, businesses, and the tax system against fraud and identity theft. Some items on this year's Dirty Dozen list are new, while others are re-emerging. Re while the Dirty Dozen is not a legal document for a formal listing of agency enforcement priorities, it is intended to alert taxpayers and the tax professional community about various scams and schemes. So trends on social media, fraudulent form filing and bad advice. Social media can connect people and information from all over the world. Unfortunately, sometimes people provide bad advice that can lure good taxpayers into trouble. The IRS warns taxpayers to be wary of trusting internet advice, whether it's a fraudulent tactic promoted by scammers or it's potentially false tax related scheme. Uh, trending across popular social media platforms. The IRS is aware of various filing season 
uh, hashtags and social media topics leading to inaccurate and potentially fraudulent information. The central theme involves people trying to use legitimate tax forms for the wrong reason. So here are just here are just two of the recent schemes circulating online. You got the form 8944 fraud, a recent example of bad advice circulating on social media that could lead to fraudulent form filing involves form 8944 preparer e-file hardship waiver request. There are widely inaccurate suggestions being made about this form. Posts claim that Form 8944 can be used by taxpayers to receive a refund from the IRS even if the taxpayer has a balance due. This is false information. Form 8944 is for tax professionals own, is for, for tax professional use only. While Form 8944 is a legitimate IRS tax forms, it's intended for a targeted group of tax return preparers who are requesting a waiver so they can file tax returns on paper instead of electronically. It is not in any way a form the average taxpayers can use to avoid tax bills. Taxpayers who intentionally file forms with false or fraudulent information can face serious consequences including potentially civil and criminal penalties. Then you got the Form W-2 fraud. This scheme, which is circulating on social media, encourages people to use tax software to manually fill out Form W-2, wage and tax statement, and include false information. In this W-2 scheme, scam artists suggest people to make up large income and withholding figures as well as the employer it's coming from. So now you see what's happening here. Normally, you get the W-2 from the employer, which the IRS pressured the employer to do. And so you have to report your income in accordance with what's on the W-2. Well, what if you pretended you had a false employer and you, and you made a W-2 that had, that had income on it, but more withholdings than you would owe income on, and then you get a refund from it, and the IRS thinks everything's cool because they have the W-2 on their side too. Well, yeah, that again, that could work in the short run, but it's at, at some point it could become quite clear that the W-2 that was issued is is fraudulent. It's, it's not right because it because there's no actual business income or entity that that's tied to the form that was sent in likely. Right. So that and, and that's the kind of scam where where you can't you would think that it would be a lot easier for the IRS to say there was intention for fraudulent activity if you actually filled out a W-2 form as if you're a made-up employer and you're not really an employer. That seems, you know, like intention might be something that they could prove there, which is usually, you know, harsher penalties if there's intention of fraud uh, there. So, in any case, scam artists then instruct people to file the bogus tax returns electronically in hopes of getting a substantial refund. The IRS, along with the Security Summit partners and the tax industry of the states, are actively watching for this scheme. In addition, the IRS works with payroll companies and large employers as well as the Social Security Administration to verify W-2 information. The IRS and the Summit partners warn people not to fall for this scam. Taxpayers who knowingly file fraudulent tax returns potentially face significant civil and criminal penalties. How taxpayers can verify information. Keep in mind, if something sounds good to, to, true to be true, it probably is. Except for those stimulus payments they did like a couple of years ago and the, and the PPP loans and everything. And the, you know, that, that stuff and the child tax credit with the advanced child tax credit. All that stuff was didn't too good to be true, except now it, it kind of is too good to be true because inflation's kicking in and the piper will be paid somewhere or the other. That's reality. But in any case, th th that's the thing here. IRS.gov has a forms re uh, re re repository with legitimate and detailed instructions for taxpayers on how to fill out the forms. Uh, use IRS.gov official IRS social media account 
or other government sites to fact check information, make a difference, report fraud, scams, and schemes. As part of the Dirty Dozen awareness effort, the IRS encourages people to report individual who promote improper and abusive tax schemes as well as tax return preparers who deliberately prepare improper returns. To report an abusive tax scheme or a tax return preparer, people should mail or fax completed Form 14242, report suspected abuse tax prep preparations or preparers, there's a link to that here, and any supporting material to the IRS Lead Development Center and the Office of Promoter Investigations, there's, an, there's a mailing address you can check out. Alternatively, taxpayers and tax practitioners may send this information to the IRS Whistleblower Office for possible monetary reward. That's right, basically bounty hunting here. Basically bounty hunting. What's the, what's, how much do you get? How much do you get? They don't tell you. I don't have that information. Maybe you can check it out at the whistleblower page and see what kind of rewards we got going out for these for the the blowing of the whistle. Any case, for more information, see abusive tax schemes and abusive tax return preparers here. There'll be a link there's links to all this stuff and there'll be a link to this in the description.